Hi, okay, let's take a, a little time and take a look at our links for VMware and the um, ISO for Ubuntu. Uh, take a look at the downloads. Take a look at what an ISO is, the internals of an ISO. Uh, let's go ahead and, and run VMware and create an ISO and, and take a look at, or create a, a VM and uh, take a look at some of the, the installation procedures within that. Uh, we'll go ahead and install Ubuntu and uh, just, just in the end verify that it's working. So, so on our site under the Linux installation we have the VMware workstation link and I've got some of those out here already. This is what that link or where that link goes. You can just go ahead and download now the VMware Workstation 12 player for Windows. It's a freebie. So, um, and it works really pretty well. And it's just an application. It's a fairly small download and it's just an application. And that application creates these container files for full operating systems. Uh, when you click on download now, it'll go ahead and automatically save to your, I'll go to downloads to your download directory. Now I've went ahead and moved those files out since, but this is where by default uh, it'll download. Okay, now we'll back up to our course to go ahead and get the ISO, which is uh, a disk image. Go ahead and click on this link. It takes you out to uh, this site right here. Let's do this again. I just want to make sure that, that goes to the right spot and I'm telling you the right spot, I guess I am. Um, and this is the Ubuntu desktop. Now Ubuntu 16.04.1 is for the LTS for long-term support. Um, so it's a four-pay kind of service, but we can download it for free uh, just by going ahead and clicking download and scrolling down. And then um, we won't uh, contribute to Ubuntu. We'll just go not now, take me to the download. And then you can go ahead, uh, it should start automatically. And if it doesn't, of course, just click on the download now. But I went ahead and just saved the file. It's an ISO, it's about 1.5 gig as I recall. So it'll take a while to, to download. Um, not bad, it's a pretty fast network, we're, we're okay. So let me go ahead and go back to the file management, uh, the file window. What, Again, that'll download to downloads. I just went ahead and put those ISOs out in a directory called ISO and software. So I have my uh, Ubuntu desktop and I have my VMware player. I had downloaded server, but we're not gonna use that. Uh, I think in the end it would be more difficult to use and it doesn't work with chapter 11 or very well with chapter 11 of our text. Uh, everything else should be fine. Now, take a look at this. What is an ISO? Well, it's a disk image. So it's really just, it contains all the files that the regular distribution disk would contain. If I double click on it, it's just like a compressed file with, uh, with a boot directory, Casper, EFI, install, all the stuff, all the files, the installation files that a regular uh, distribution DVD would have. We're just using the ISO uh, rather than the distribution uh, DVD. So it, it's really handy to just copy, move around here and there. Let's see, let, let's look at the size of that ISO. And we'll go back to ISO. And it is, let's look at properties here. Uh, where do we see it? 1.4 gig. Okay, there you go. All right, now, now with that said, uh, We'll assume that we've installed VMware already. I'll assume that. I'm going to go ahead and it's just at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, click on VMware, VMware Workstation. Now, I've installed a couple of these uh, Ubuntu's before. Um, so you'll see them out here. When you initially install it, you won't see any of these. What we want to do initially here is go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Remember, VMware is just the software that will create container files uh, for any operating system that you want to install. That could be Windows, it could be a Mac, it could be a server environment, it could be uh, any flavor of Linux that you would choose. We can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So initially we'll go ahead and choose, we can cho and choose either an installer disk, uh, which would be the DVD, 
or we can choose the installer disk image file and that's what we will choose. Um, you can go ahead and browse initially to, to the particular location where you saved the ISO. Uh, go ahead and click on the ISO, open it, it gives you this particular directory structure, that's fine. Note that you can also create the container file, the VM, virtual machine, and install an operating system later. Let's just do this all at the same time. Um, what I want to do is make sure I note when you're installing these virtual machines, you need to have virtualization turned on on your computer. Virtualization is a BIOS setting. So when you start your, do a cold boot, you start your computer uh, from scratch, you can either press and computers will have different BIOS um, keys. Some will be F1 or F2 or F10 or delete. So you can go ahead and as you boot, press the button, uh, get into your BIOS settings. Uh, your BIOS also does things like uh, change the boot sequence, uh, set passwords, those sorts of things. There should be, and I can't imagine any computer in our class not having a virtualization setting. Uh, there should be, you should be able to find the virtualization, turn it on, reboot, and then all these uh, VMs should install correctly. Now, going back to this, we have our uh, installer disk image. We found it. Now, personalize Linux. Just to keep it simple, um, you are the administrator of this box. So, if you forget your administrator password, your SOL. I'm going to go ahead and just use my username as Sean. Password is Sean, and the confirmation confirmation of the password is Sean. Just to keep it simple, there is no security issue involved with this. Uh, in a production system, th these are things you don't do. For our uh, in-class use, we can do it just so we remember. Click on Next. Uh, by default, it's going to be Ubuntu 64-bit. I'm going to put down CS251 version 2 as the particular name of this virtual machine. Check out this the location. Uh, this is uh, this is fairly important. You can go ahead and put this VM anywhere that you want. Okay, anywhere you want. By default, it goes into your users um, and documents directory on C, on drive C. Um, I found it useful and I typically do, I'm just going to leave the default here, but I typically go out and put it into a particular directory. Notice that what I've done here is put it in courses and then CS251VM. That, that's where I've put um, my working my working copy basically. Um, that's uh, this way I know where to find it if I want to go ahead and copy it, shut it down, copy it, and make it back up. Taking the default, that's what I'm going to do this time. All right, maximum disk size 20 gig. That means it's going to start this big. About five or six gig is is where it'll start at, but it can go ahead and expand to 20 gig dynamically. So as you add more applications, more data, it will dynamically expand. Uh, just select split virtual disk into multiple files. It's more efficient from a performance perspective. Now, this is a cool setting. Customize hardware. There are several things here. So memory. Um, one gig will run Ubuntu really, really well. If you, in a production system, if you need more memory, you can just go ahead and jack it up to 2, 4, 8 gig, whatever you want. So um, you can do that dynamically. Um, I think you have to shut the VM down and then change the setting, bring it back up again. Uh, but you can increase the performance significantly with memory. Processors, same deal. Uh, virtually, it has one processor virtually, which means it's going to go ahead and use the actual physical processor, obviously. But um, number of processor cores, you can jack that up to 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16 and again increase the performance of your VM really significantly. The other part of this is uh, the network adapter. It, by default it's NAT. You can think of this as, and some of you know this already in your, from your networking courses and you should, NAT is name address translation and NAT is typically used in like in a coffee shop or here on campus. You sit down, you fire up your notebook or your laptop and uh, your computer will go out and grab an IP address uh, off of the DHCP server here on campus. Okay, 
no problem, that works great. Now, when you create VM, or when you install VMware, or VM, yeah, VMware, uh, what you're gonna see is, or what's gonna happen is, uh, VMware basically um, sets up a NAT pool for any particular device, uh, any particular operating systems that you choose to install into a container file. I hope that makes sense. Whenever that particular operating system is fired up, VMware is going to go ahead and provide it, give your operating system, the, the, the virtual one, an IP address. NAT is what makes that happen. Okay. Um, and that is what makes that happen. If we go out to, I'm not going to right now, I'll pause it and come back and, and show you that. But uh, that's what NAT is. I hope, hopefully that's clear enough and we'll step through that in class. We'll close this. Again, you can customize this hardware, it's really cool. We'll go ahead and finish here. It's going to go ahead and start to install this operating system. This is just about removable devices. Uh, just okay that, that's fine. And uh, at this point, it's going to go ahead and let me move that over there. Start installing Ubuntu into this VM. Now I'm going to go. Um, you see a variety of command line. I just want to note this. You see a com variety of command lines across the screen and GUIs. Um, Linux typically runs from the command line kind of prompts. Those those command line command line um, commands. Uh, is what actually fires up the operating system. This is just a shell, a graphical shell that goes over the top of that. Now, with all that said, I'm going to go back out here for a second and pause, um, if I can, here, and um, and then let this install, and then come back in just a little while. So, let's see if I can find my. Let's see, there we go, I'll get right there. There we go, pause it. Okay, as our, let me double check. Yes, that's running, okay. So as our um, Ubuntu is installing, I want to go ahead, go out to the command prompt. You can right click on start and then uh, run, uh, run uh, CMD command to get to your command prompt, and you probably have all done that a thousand times. Now, I'm going to go out and type in ipconfig and actually slash all. Now, what I'm looking for is this. Remember I had mentioned uh, the, the NAT pool? What we're looking for is, uh, and it'll just take me a second to find it here probably, vmnet8. Now, if you look at this, and you see VMNet 1 and VMNet 8. Typically, this is the, the IP address or the, the network. It's a Class C network, so there's 255 hosts. Uh, this is the network address that you're gonna, that's going to be given to your virtual host. 192.168.117, in my case. Now, yours is going to be different. You need to check to see what yours is. Uh, VMware doesn't seem to have any regular rules as far as specifically applying or specifically using a specific IP address or a network address. Um, three of us fire this up, we're probably going to see three different things, three different IP addresses. So your network is 1, 192.168.117.1. Whenever Ubuntu fires up, we're going to see that it's been given uh, an address that'll look something like 192.168.117.10 or .100. That is what that uh, a NAT component does with VMware. So once again, what we're doing is running IP config slash all, scrolling up, and just so we know what those IP addresses should be, looking for VMNet 8. That's the NAT pool that uh, VMware creates for you, those container operating systems. Okay, so uh, with that, we'll check our Ubuntu installation. It's still working on it. I'm going to go ahead and pause once again. Okay, um, I think, uh, yes, we're back and running here. 
and uh, this is where this installation gets to. You see the Ubuntu 64-bit CS251 v2, that's what we named this installation. Uh, you should be able to, let me kind of minimize that, you should be able to to go ahead and uh, just grab it, resize it, make it full screen. Uh, it should do all this stuff pretty dynamically. As soon as I say that, guess what doesn't happen? Uh, I may have to, not sure. Uh, so, uh, although that should work, we can look at that. Um, this is our Ubuntu screen. I'm going to go ahead and enter my password uh, for, for Sean, as me as the user. I'll go ahead and get into this. Um, and uh, it'll take just a second to go ahead and start. Now when we're looking at this, it's a little hinky. Um, let's see. To release that mouse. There we go. Control Alt Escape releases that mouse if it gets caught. Control Alt Escape. This is the operating system. Now under player, what we see is um, download virtual appliance and some preferences. And then the power, you can go ahead and just suspend the guest of wherever it is. If you're in the middle of an installation, you can suspend it uh, and the VM and it'll go ahead and just continue to, or just it'll just stay at that point. It'll save, uh, It'll save that point, uh, it'll suspend that point and save a lock file. And then when you can go ahead and load back into it or go back into it again and restart it, it'll pick up at that very point. Um, also, you can send a control alt delete if you need to. Not so useful in Linux, really useful in the Windows environment. Uh, you can set up removable devices and you can manage uh, the box. You can install, reinstall VMware tools. That's what should change the, the sizing of this uh, deal. It should have been installed initially in the first place here, or you can go to virtual machine settings. When you do that, you'll see the very same settings that we looked at early on. We'll go ahead and cancel that, uh, which includes memory, number of CPUs, all of that. Um, let's see, what else are we looking at here? We can go ahead and suspend it. We can restart the guest. We can shut it down. You can go ahead and send a control alt delete just with that particular command. Enter full screen mode. Now, I've got... Uh, I'm the vid or the video is not sized over the whole screen. We'll probably not see everything, but I'm just going to go ahead and switch out to full screen. It's redrawing it uh, over here on the left side of the screen. This is my uh, um, um, uh, icons, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that back to where I need to be. There we go. Now it resized. Okay. Um, and then we have uh, a un unity mode, and then we have some other icons here. Now, where we're going to work almost exclusively, uh, right click and then open terminal. And for the, for the particular assignment, uh, this is what I'm looking for right here is, is this. So what we can do if you press control print screen, or I guess alternate print screen, that should go ahead and capture this particular uh, screen. It says Sean at Ubuntu. Well, I'll see, um, I'll see uh, an, a, your username at Ubuntu for, for each one of your assignments. This is all I need. This is really how, um, where we need to be. We can type in, we can click into this. We have to click into that. It's a little hinky like that. List, I don't have any particular files out here on my list. Um, Who's logged on? I am, uh, and so on and so on. This is where we need to be um, to run those administrator commands, sudo, um, and it should lay out really nicely for you here. So anyway, um, again, alt print screen, we'll go ahead and grab that particular screen, and we should be good to go. So um, I think that really covers it. I know this is a longer video. Just take this in parts if you want. Uh, that's fine. This will be at YouTube, so thank you very much.